Hello. In this video, I'm going to present uh, a, a famous set of examples about infinity known collectively as Hilbert's Hotel. Uh, David Hilbert was a famous German mathematician. I think his dates were 1862 to 1943. And Hilbert may have been the last mathematician who, who was pretty conversant on, on all aspects of mathematics. Uh, math is so large anymore that there probably will never be someone like David Hilbert uh, who can really um, understand about all mathematics. Well, in any event, uh, Hilbert came up with this example to illustrate some of the uh, strange vagaries of infinity. And uh, let's, let's begin. Now, the Hilbert Hotel has infinitely many people. I'm sorry, it has infinitely many rooms. So, infinitely many rooms. And a customer walks in one evening, walks up to the counter and says, good evening, I would like to have a room for the night. And the clerk behind the counter says, I, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, I have, uh, I have no more rooms left. I, I have no vacancies. And the customer says, well, how is that possible? You have infinitely many rooms. And the clerk says, but, but, but sir, I have infinitely many customers this evening. So the, uh, the customer walks around a bit, paces, um, has an idea, comes back to the counter and says, well, well look, I, I think I have a solution. Can you ask the people in room number one to move to room number two, the people in room two to move to room three, the people in room three to move to room four, and, and so on down the line? That way, you will have shifted everybody, and you have infinitely many rooms, you can shift them forward, and um, that, will, that will open up room number one for me. The clerk says, oh, that's brilliant. I'll be happy to do that. So, now, now what did that illustrate? It, it sort of illustrates that if you have a finite number like 1 and add it to infinity, you still get infinity. Okay, so infinity sort of, sort of gobbles up finite numbers like that. All right, well, the, the second evening, a customer walks in the door, goes to the counter and says, Good evening, sir. I have, uh, would like a set of rooms for the night. I have a lot of friends with me. And the clerk behind the counter says, well, uh, that, that shouldn't be a problem. I have infinitely many people in infinitely many rooms, but I believe I can figure out how to, how to give them all a room. How many people are in your party? And the customer says, well, I, I have infinitely many people with me. And the clerk says, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to deal with that. I really would like to give you all rooms for the evening, but I don't know how to, to add infinitely many people to the rooms we already have. So the customer walks around a bit, paces, comes back and says, well, look, I have an idea. Can you ask the people in room number one to move to room number two, the people in room two to move to room four, the people in room three to move to room six, and so on down the line. That way, all your current customers will be in even numbered rooms, and my infinitely many friends can occupy the odd-numbered rooms. And the clerk says, oh, that's brilliant. I will accommodate you. So, uh, now, now what did that illustrate? That, that, that sort of illustrates that if you take infinity and add it to infinity, you, you still get infinity. Probably not a surprising result at all. But uh, it, it, gets, it gets stranger even than this, the third night. So, in the third... Third evening, the customer walks in the door, says, good evening, I would like um, a lot of rooms for the evening. And the clerk behind the counter is uh, thinking, oh, no problem, I'll be happy to do it. How many people are in your party? Well, sir, I have infinitely many people in my party, and they're on, uh, they're on buses. I have, uh, there are infinitely many buses, and each bus has infinitely many people in them. And <laughs> the clerk scratches his head, says, okay, you're telling me you have infinitely many people on each bus, and you have infinitely many buses? The customer says, oh, oh, yes, I do. Um, and the clerk says, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to accommodate that. I really, really would like your business, but uh, I, I don't know how to, uh, how to give them rooms. So the customer walks around a bit, thinks about it, uh, paces, and, and comes up with a solution. And this guy is really mathematically inclined. He says, well, well look, I, I think I have a solution. Can you ask the people in room number one to move to room number two, people in room two to move to room four, people in room three to move to room six, and here's what we'll do. 
We're going to take the people on the first bus and we'll assign them these numbers. The first person off the bus will get room number three. The second person will get room number nine. The third person gets 27. The fourth person gets 81. And so on down the line. In other words, the people getting off the first bus will get powers of three for their room numbers. Now, you notice these are all odd numbers, so, so far we've, we have found room for them. Clerk says, okay, I'm with you. Now what? Well, when you go to the second bus, let's, let's put the first person on that bus in room number five. The second person goes to room 25. Third person goes to 125. The fourth person to 625, and so on. In other words, we're going to assign them according to powers of five. And, and in so doing, since 3 and 5 are both prime numbers, a power of 3 can never equal to a power of 5, then they'll all have separate rooms. The clerk says, oh, okay, but you still have infinitely many buses. Ah, the clerk, but the customer says, ah, but, but there are infinitely many prime numbers. Oh. And the clerk says, I get it. So... Each bus is assigned one of the infinitely many prime numbers, and each person on the bus is assigned a unique power of that prime number. And because prime numbers do not share common factors with any powers, then everybody gets a separate room. And the clerk says, uh, the customer says, ah, oh, it gets better than that. I've just created vacancies for you. Because the, the, the room numbers, which are products of odd prime numbers are, are going to be open. For example, room number 15, 3 times 5 is open. Room number 21, three times, 3 times 7 is open for you. I've just created infinitely many openings for you also. Oh, the clerk was very happy and, uh, and accommodated him. Now, uh, that, <laughs> now this, uh, this example required taking one thing on faith, that there are infinitely many prime numbers. And to address that, I'm going to do the next video uh, proving that there are infinitely many prime numbers. That goes that back actually to ancient Greece. But um, in any event, what did this, this last uh, Hilbert Hotel example show? It showed that, in essence, infinity times infinity is still infinity. Okay, now, this is probably not surprising, but this solution, I thought, was, was pretty ingenious by, by Hilbert. And uh, it also crosses over to the idea of, of sets of numbers and um, how they compare. Now, what is odd is that all these infinities are the same infinity. They're what Georg Cantor, another German mathematician, called Aleph Null. And he found a different kind of infinity from this, one that's a larger infinity, if you will. <laughs> is it possible for one infinity to be larger than another? Well, Gant Cantor was able to describe things that, that fit that bill. So we will, uh, we will head in that direction uh, with a series and, uh, and explore that, that aspect of infinity.